Okay, take a look at our perfect geometric egg-shaped void here. Now the magnet was hanging lower than this, so it's off now because when I yanked it out, the string that it's attached to yanked the magnet up. But you can see our perfect geometric void with our perfect 42.5 degree centrifugal baseline and our centripetal, they call it a bucking formation in the frozen water right here at the center. But at the bottom, we have perfect 42.5 degree Processional divergent centrifugal freeze lines, but most importantly, look at the center void here. Perfect, not close, not kind of close, absolutely perfect geometric egg shaped void. Now, this is how nature quote unquote sees magnetism. Now remember this is not a magnet even though it is a powerful N55 magnet but the magnet is mostly a dielectricity. 3.23 parts dielectricity to one part magnetism as I state in the book magnet a true magnet is a dielectric object. Now if this magnet were hanging where it was before I yanked it out here it was hanging about yay low that you have a spatial void of phi and a spatial void of one up here but the charge void is one to phi so both sides are both phi and one we have a spatial phi here but a charge circle of phi up here we have a charge radius of phi, but a spatial of one. Remember this magnet was hanging lower. The string that it was attached to got yanked the magnet up some. But look, this is nature's way of seeing, quote unquote, for lack of a better term, but I will explain fully in the book, seeing magnetism. Look at this is a perfect, absolutely perfect geometric egg. I performed this experiment over and over again. However, this is the first time I've done it with distilled water, which I knew I'd get better, clearer results. But at the very bottom here, we have a perfect centrifugal at the very base. Perfect centrifugal lines and centripetal, as I call it, a bucking formation, this white column. This is the centripetal part that's coming up to the magnetism. This is using distilled water and a one inch by half inch N55 neodymium iron boron. And as you can see, as I move the light around, you can see we have a perfect geometric egg. Absolutely 100% perfect. Let me rotate it where you can see it best. Here you go, you can kind of see it best here. Now these, you would think these are crack lines right here and here, but they're not. Remember the dielectric inertial plane runs this way. The uh, centrifug centrifugal divergent magnetism leaves here and enters centripetally on the other side, and likewise on the other side. Centrifugally divergent moves around and returns centripetally. So these cloudy lines right here that you see, you think those are crack lines, but if you were able to see closely, they are very fine, misty, etheric lines. That is nature's electricity, okay? What your brain and what your nervous system operate on are not electrical. They are in a sense, but they are nature's electricity. They're dielectric. Lightning, everything that the plants have, everything that your brain and your nervous system operates on is dielectric, not electric. Okay, so, unless, so what's ultimately the difference between dielectricity and electricity? I said, well, about the best simple analogy that they could think of to tell you is a dielectricity or nature's electricity is like sugar cane and electricity, which is synthetically created from magnetism and dielectricity, is like saccharin or sweet and low, a synthetic byproduct of dielectricity and magnetism operating in unison as humans created in AC and DC generators and whatnot. But this is, like I said, for lack of a better term, how nature sees an electromagnetic perfect object. Remember, which 3.236 parts dielectricity to one part magnetism. Look at this perfect egg-shaped formation. I'll explain this fully in the book, but 
I wanted you to see this. I've performed this experiment many times. Everything in here is perfectly explainable and hyperlogical. Remember the hydrogen atom, atom has the perfect Pythagorean geometry of 108.36.36. This is how nature, and i.e. nature, everything living in life is based upon water. You know, ultimately just a pile of dust without water. This is the perfect ovum of life. This is the perfect egg geometry, which as I said, is a spatial 1 to spatial phi but a charge phi to a charge one. So why does nature, i.e. water, nature and water being one and the same thing, ultimately everything in nature that is alive, biological, is water. Why does nature see magnetism like this in any testing media, see uh, magnetism as perfectly symmetrical in charge, centrifugally and centripetally and dielectrically? Well, it's easily explained upon the, net, the natural geometry of water. And this explains the principles of life in absolute divine simplicity to such a level that you will have to read the, the third edition upcoming of the book Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism to understand why. But I wanted you to see this perfect formation. I'll continue to experiment, but this is the sixth time I've seen it. But it's my best example because I knew I needed to start boiling water or using uh, distilled water, which is what this is. I got the same results regardless of using tap water. I just get much clearer and better results using uh, distilled water like I'm using here. I'm going to zoom in. I hope you can see this better. But I have perfect centrifugal divergent lines and this bucking formation is the centripetal returning where it's cloudy. That's where all the bubbles are concentrated because all generation revolves around the dielectric inertial plane and generation is always centripetal, meaning convergent, going inwards towards the inertial plane, which is where the dielectricity is. The magnetism exists on either side, reciprocating outwards. The dielectricity is centripetal on both sides, going inwards. This is generation, reintegration of magnetism. Remember, all forms of ether modality are ether, dielectricity, electrical, magnetism. They are all ether modalities. Anyway, I wanted you to see this because it is absolutely divine. What it means is divine divinely simplex, divinely logical. Nobody's ever seen this before and if they've ever seen it, and I've found no examples that anybody's ever seen it, they do not understand it. I understand it perfectly and fully and I will explain it to you in the third edition of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism due out about the middle of August. Hopefully, all things willing. And remember, the magnet would normally be a little lower than this, and yanking it out, the string was lifted up, so normally it would sit just a little bit lower than that. But, at least you see it. Thanks for watching. Remember to download the book, and keep an eye out for the third edition.